Hey guys, this is Neil at Catalyst Machine Works, and I'm going to do a build video for our brand new Massive Droner 3 inch HD version. Uh, this is her right here. Um, this guy has got all of the essence of the Massive Droner that you have grown to love, except now it's gotten even better. You can run beautiful, crystal clear HD. My friends, does it get any better? I think not. I think not, okay? So what I'm gonna do basically is put this guy together just to frame itself. Um, then I'm gonna go back and sort of give you some uh, insight and maybe some uh, tips and tricks for order of operations and what you need to look out for when installing all of your electronics into it. Um, now, there's another thing that I want to mention. We are right in the middle of this godforsaken COVID-19 BS, okay? <laughs> and uh, that's actually not why I have these blue gloves on. I always wear blue gloves, okay? I was the guy who made blue gloves cool. Now, everybody's got blue gloves on, but you guys just remember that. I made these cool. I started this back in 2015. Now everybody's trying to catch up with me, all right? Just patting myself on the back there. Uh, no, but all joking aside, I've got all three of the kids here today uh, because obviously they're not in school. So if you hear anything weird coming from the other room, any weird sounds or screaming or yelling or laughing, could be all three at the same time. Uh, I apologize. There's not a dang thing I can do about it <laughs> because they're just here with me and... Uh, they're loud, kind of like their dad. Anyways, there's that, so you have been warned. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started with the build. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and review all of the parts that come in this guy. I've got the bill of material, AKA parts list, pulled up here on my phone. You can go to the website on the product page, down at the bottom and open this up so you can see what comes in it. And you can follow along when you're building this thing. All right, so this is obviously the bottom plate. And then we've got the side cage plates. There's a front, middle, and rear. All right, so this is the front, this is the middle, and these are the rear. And obviously there's two side plates, so there's two of each of these. We've got the front brace, okay? We've got the Vista mounts. These are 3D printed. They're not gonna be red. This is our prototype. We just decided to print it in red, but yours are gonna come black. Um, okay, so there's a left and a right. These are made of TPU, a left and a right Vista mount. There is a black TPU antenna mount right here, the associated antenna tubes. Uh, we've got a couple M3 uh, aluminum knurled standoffs. These are 20 millimeter long. We've got a Velcro strap. We've got some little aluminum sleeves right here. And then we have some fasteners. We've got a fastener bag. Okay, so there's a few more parts that came in the, the than uh, compared to the original massive droner, but you'll see why there's why there's these extra parts here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna start with is the bottom plate, the two cage side plates with the rear section, one of the uh, 20 millimeter standoffs, these little self-tapping screws, some M3 nuts. These are aluminum M3 by 10 millimeter screws and the antenna mount. All right, so let's get started. Okay, I've just got them in snug for now. I'm not going to tighten them up the entire way. We'll do that in a minute. So what we want to do is go ahead and run this standoff through this TPU part like this. All right, make sure that it is uh, pretty centered up there. Run this in. Okay, 
we're going to run these little screws in the side. They go in the uh, this little smaller hole in the back here. Okay, just get them snug. You don't need to uh, tighten the heck out of it. You'll just strip the plastic material. They just need to be barely snug, just like this. All right. There's that. We'll go ahead and put in the antenna tubes. The antenna tubes come uh, pretty long. Um, we've got an example of a uh, build here with an XM Plus receiver. So you can see what it looks like when you're using the antenna tubes. Obviously, they don't need to be that long. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these down, probably at about half, half the size. Where is my cutter? Here we go. We'll cut them to about right there. There we go. We'll run these in. Okay. There we go. Now if you want, you can put a zip tie around there. Hold these in a little bit better. But that's how that works. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and assemble the midsection. Okay, so it's these two plates here, and then the uh, the vista mounts, and then obviously the screws that run through here, and then there's little sleeves that go in here. That's a very important part. I'll show you how it works. So what we want to do first is take the vista mounts and press the little sleeves in. Like that. Oh. There we go. Now I want to point out that these are not the same thing. Okay, there's a left and a right. They are unique. All right, and so the reason that they're unique, as you can see, is that it locates, let me get the built one here, it locates the Vista farther forward towards the camera. And that's to give you room um, in the back for this little UFL connector on the Vista. Okay? So you want to make sure and put that in correctly. So orient it such that it is going to locate the Vista farther forward. So that's how it's going to look right there. Okay, and to get a to get an idea, what you can do is kind of look at where these holes are in reference to the standoffs. So that's how that works. So let's get the screws that join this thing together. Here they are. They're M3 uh, by 12 aluminum, and we will go ahead and run these in. This. Oops. Yeah, that's it. Oop. Wait. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> okay, now you can see why you'd need that sleeve in there. Because if you didn't have the sleeve and you just start wrenching on this thing, it's just going to compress the TPU and, well, nothing's going to work right. Other side plate. Okay, got to make sure that it is oriented in this direction. All right, that is how that goes. All right, so we've got the rear section assembled. We've got the mid section. Now let's go ahead and put on the front. So we need the front brace. We need the two front pieces. Another standoff. Move this in camera view. Um, 
couple more of these M3x12 aluminum screws and let's do it. Now to put this front brace on I need motors so what I did I just grabbed a couple of these just so I can show you how this thing works just a couple of these old motors I found in my bin and we will also need M2 by I don't remember how long these are they're on the bill of material <laughs> there's four of these they run through the uh, run through the front brace run through the bottom plate and then into the motors so we'll need those to be able to attach this thing here okay so we'll run this through here this is going to go into the motor like this Okay, so we've got the front brace attached with those screws. And now for the other screw holes, just use the screws that come with your motor. Um, from our experience, we've actually never bought any motors that don't come with screws. So we feel there's no need to include them in the kit. So just use what came with your motors and you should be good to go. And uh, so now we'll go ahead and uh, finish off the uh, front section here. Oops. Okay, so we've got these little prongs. You want to line those up? There we go. See there? We just had one of the creatures come and open the door and I tur turned around and looked at him with that dad look <laughs> and he, <laughs> he closed the door and went the other direction. That meant don't mess with dad right now, he's making a video. <laughs> okay. All right, so that is that is done. So there you go. That's how it all works. Okay. Uh, once this thing is tightened down, and obviously once you get the assembly all complete, you want to really go through here, and you can you can torque these pretty well, right? So once you torque these things up, this thing becomes extremely rigid. Make sure everything is torqued up. Finish off with these guys. Don't go absolutely crazy, right? These are little tiny parts. This is little thin pieces of carbon fiber. Don't overdo it. All right, so there we go. That's how that works. Okay, so um, that pretty much covers the, the basics of the frame assembly itself. Um, some things I want to point out, all right? So we don't include stack hardware, all right? Most of these stacks come with hardware if, if they don't, if whatever you purchase does not, and you're looking for some, we sell this stuff on our, uh, on our website. You can find that out on our website. Um, there are some other screws that come with this. So there's actually four of these M2 by 16 millimeter screws. Those are for mounting up the Vista. So you can see how it works is the head is here. The screw goes up through the entire thing and terminates with these little uh, M2 nuts right here. Okay, so we got little M2 nylock nuts that that's how that works. That's pretty obvious how that works right there. 
Um, and that's real nice because this allows the, uh, the Vista to move whenever you crash. It's, it's not hard mounted, so it allows it to deviate and move. That's pretty cool. Okay. Then we also include some camera mount screws, little M2 camera mount screws, and a bunch of washers. All of these washers are for the motors. So how it works is sometimes on some motors, when you put the screw through the uh, carbon and up into the motor, um, depending on how long these screws are, they come in your motors, it can actually get close to the motor windings. And so you really want to pay attention to that. And if it gets close to the motor windings, and especially if it's touching the motor windings, you can use these little M2 washers to space that screw away from the winding. Because if it touches the winding, your motor's toast. So you definitely don't want that to happen. All right, so a few of the things I want to point out about this. Uh, the first thing I'll discuss is the antenna mount. You can see that we're just using the stock antenna that comes with the Vista. And so the way that it works is the little UFL is, is routed up through here. And then you just set it on top of the mount. And there's a couple of little zip tie slots you can run through here. And then you can take, we applied a little bit of heat right here and bent this thing up so it's pointing up. Um, so there's that. Now, you can see the orientation that we have the Vista mounted in it. Okay, it's kind of mounted in what I would consider to be the up orientation. The, in this orientation, the issue here is that the USB, you see the USB right there? It's covered up by the side plate. So if you want to mount the Vista in this orientation that we have it, to access that USB, just take this screw out, and then the side plate rotates up, and now you have access to that USB port. Another option, and this works totally fine, my builder's actually doing this now on all of our builds, is to flip the Vista upside down. So that way, you know, everything's upside down. So now the USB is exposed because it's right here instead of sitting there. And also this little UFL connector is now on the bottom. Um, and honestly, I think that's a better way to do it. Keep in mind, this was our first build with this, so we just kind of figured it out as we went. But I think that's a better way to do it, with to flip the uh, Vista upside down. It doesn't matter which orientation it's in. Okay, now you can see how the camera's mounted in here. That's pretty standard stuff, pretty obvious how that works. You can get any camera angle you want. Um, that's pretty nice. Now, there's one, yeah, one other thing I'm going to mention with this build, okay? And it has to do with wiring of the Vista. So the Vista's got little pads that you have to hardwire to. And the way that we built this up was that you can take out two of the screws and rotate this entire middle section up with the Vista attached. Rotate it up and the wires are long enough such that they will allow for that to happen. Now the reason you would want to do that is because it will allow you to reach this stack. Okay? If you need to do repairs or replace the flight controller or whatever you need to do in there, that will allow you to do it just by taking these two screws out and rotating this entire midsection up, and it's kind of like a clamshell. It lets you into the, uh, the goods on the inside. All right, so that is, uh, I guess that brings it close to this, this build video for the new HD version of our Massive Droner 3-inch. If you have any questions, please email us at info at catalystmachineworks.com or support at catalystmachineworks.com. All right, everybody stay healthy out there and watch out for them COVIDs.